Welcome to Channel 17, the Town of Colony Government Channel. Hello and welcome to The Money Factor. I'm Richard Naylor, your host. Today we'll be talking about the 2010 census. We'll be discussing what's new, how the data are used, and giving you a little context about the census uh, in general. Our guest today is Joanna King from the Capital District Regional Planning Commission. Glad to have her here. I want to welcome you, Joanna. Well, thank you, Richard. It's great. Census is upon us. Indeed it is. And I think by the time people see the show, they will have received their forms. Yes, the forms are being mailed now. If you haven't already received it, they will be arrived by March 19th. That's likely the last date. Okay. So by the end of this week, very soon, very exciting for us. Uh, I thought because in preparing for the show, the last second, I, I decided to look up a little history. And I knew that it, the census was um, part of the Constitution, mm -hmm. but I didn't know anything beyond that. Yep, the census started centuries ago, 1790 was the first one, and it came about because they needed to figure out how many representatives they were going to have in Congress. How do you do that? You apportion it based on population. So even today, that's one of the main reasons that we continue the census and why the Constitution states that we have to have a census every 10 years so that we know exactly how many seats we apportion per state. So it's, it's been going for quite some time. That's pretty neat. When I think about that, and I think of George Washington was, was president back then, and, and then you think, wow, they were thinking about how to set up the government, and mm -hmm. this was just a detail. A very small detail at that point <laughs> in time, but certainly an important one. Right. Certainly an important one. And then I did learn how many people were in the country at that time. Not very many. Under four million. now and almost 700,000 slaves out of that. Mm -hmm. So about a fourth of the population were slaves. Yep. Which, which is pretty high. Yeah, it definitely is, and that continued to grow, but as we all know, that ceased, and now we have millions and millions and millions of people. Lots. Well over 300 million. Mm -hmm. So that's a, a huge increase. <laughs> right. <laughs> Now, you're with the Capital District Regional Planning Commission, and I know a lot of people in the community have met people who work there. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Chen, yep. uh, Rocco Ferraro, yep. Joanna King. Joanna King. There's, it's actually a very small group. We only have six employees, but we have our fingers in lots of pots, as they say. There's just so much that CDRPC does in terms of helping communities. We work directly with a variety of communities. We work directly with organizations actually using census data to develop community needs assessments and look at specific locations. And for example, I worked with the Urban League to look at what downtown Albany, Schenectady, and Troy, what their demography looks like, how many minorities, what sort of income these minorities are making, on and on and on, and that's all directly from the census. We work with DEC and a variety of communities on a census, or rather a combined sewer overflow project. We have environmental planning, we do GIS. It's a lot. So you're really kind of the go-to people locally for mm -hmm. statistics. Nearly, yes, oh, certainly for statistics. We are actually the local state data center affiliate so that means that if anybody has a question about some sort of data, demographic data, they can come to us and we will help them get that answer. Let's just give them right now your phone number in case sure. somebody says, well, that's what I really need. I need to, I need to work with these people. Uh, how, how would they reach you? The CDRPC phone number is 518-435-0850. 518-435-0850. And, and we'll put it on the screen. Sure. And our website is very easy. It's cdrpc.org. So, so if you can say your name, Capital District Regional Planning Commission, just take the letters. Put an ORG at the end and you're good to go. You're good. Okay, yeah. great. That actually, our website has a very, very wide selection of data available directly on it. We have GIS maps of how the population has changed over the last 
60 years, it's, it's a great resource. One of the things that I used your site for, at least uh, it, it was very interesting to see, I'm not sure what I did with it, but because it's not my, I'm not a planner, mm -hmm. is your journey to work mm -hmm. map. Mm -hmm. That was fascinating to see how many people who live in Colony drive this way, how many drive that way, how many people from Schenectady County come to Colony, and how many people go to Albany, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. And that's all, again, that's all census data. Wow. So it's, it really, it reaches far, and it's very useful information to have. And also just really interesting for Joe Citizen. Just to see. To see. Right. And it kind of uh, aggregates things right there. Mm -hmm. So the census, we'll get, census. get to that. Um, why is it important to fill out the form? The census is hugely important. We need everybody to fill out the form for a lot of different reasons. The first, we actually already touched upon, it's congressional representation. In 2000, based on the 2000 census population count, New York State actually lost two seats in Congress. So one of them was lost by less than 100,000 people. It is very wow. possible that there were, in fact, 100,000 people in New York who just didn't fill out the form. We could potentially have not lost one of those seats. This year, we're projected to lose another congressional seat. So right now we're at 29, we could drop down to 28. That's one important reason to fill out your census form so that you get the representation that your state deserves. So if a state does a really bad job, they're gonna get less money. Mm -hmm. Oh, less yes. Less highway money, Drastically less, less money. everything. The, uh, the federal government apportions over $400 billion a year based on census data, which includes the stimulus money at this point. And that is, works out to be about $1,600 a person wow. per year. Yeah, and when we think 000. about filling out our taxes, that's scary. Mm -hmm. But the census is not quite as scary as filling out the taxes. It's got a lot less information. But if you don't fill out that form, what happens? Taxes could go up. So this is, it's really important, really important. Now, I, I think uh, I've read that the, the census, well, I know now because I've read uh, preparing for this, that the census has changed a lot this year. Yep. What's different? It's much easier. In years past, there were two forms. Now, there's only one. It has 10 questions. It will take probably 10 minutes to answer. I filled mine out. I timed it, actually, because I'm a bit of a data geek. And it <laughs> took me six minutes. I did it in the car while I was waiting for my to-go food to be prepared. So you were sitting. You were I was sitting. I was driving. in the parking lot. I was waiting. <laughs> I had my windows rolled down. I was enjoying the spring Great. day. It's very easy. Very easy, very fast. So you didn't need any other information? You didn't have Nothing. to go to your file cabinet? Nothing. Could do it outside in a park? In a park. Easy a walk as in the park. pie. <laughs> it, exactly. A walk in the park, slice a piece of cake. Easy. Very easy. So we can go through the questions. Um, I just want to touch on one other thing. You said it's much simpler. Well, how are we going to get the other information? Uh, how are you going to get Journey to Work out of the questions that we have now? That is a very good question. The census also does another product called the American Community Survey, which has essentially taken the place of the longer census form that we used to see on the 2000 and prior censuses. So the American Community Survey goes to three million households a year nationwide. That works out to be about 250,000 households every month get this American Community Survey, which is much more in depth. If you get that, around the same time that you get your census form, please fill out both because they're both very important. The ACS gives us the much more detailed information that we had been getting from the census. It's a sample, but it gives us stuff like journey to work. It gives us income levels. It gives us how many bathrooms you may have in your house, all of which you no longer have to answer on the census, but which are very important for people like myself, planners, nonprofit organizations, governments, businesses, to know because this information helps guide and shape the business and government decisions that get made. Right down to zoning, I would, I would mm -hmm. think, and whether you put a store here or there. Or exactly, and if I'm a business and I market myself towards women who are 45 to 55 making $60,000 and over, where I are look they? at where are they exactly? <laughs> I would look at at ACS data to okay. determine where I'm going to put my store. So, in a way, a spin on that is that 
we're saving money because we don't have to have so many people counting every single thing in the country. Uh, we're, we've learned surveys, and they're pretty accurate. If mm -hmm. we look at elections, it's not that they're horribly wrong, and we make a lot of decisions by them, so it's probably pretty accurate. They, yes. And cheaper. Yes, much cheaper. Much and cheaper easier for to us. Do a sample. So. Much easier for us, easier so, for everybody. So let's go through the questions. Sure. Uh, what do we have this year? What, what are the questions? The first question, and this is in reference to the place where you live most of the time, which is a very important fact that we'll come back to. The first question is how many people were living in, or staying in this house, apartment, or mobile home on April 1st, 2010? That confuses some people because they may re or they will likely receive the form in mid-March. So if you, you can certainly wait until April 1st to fill it out and send it in. I did not because I know that it's just going to be the same number of people in my household on April 1st as it was on March I 16th. See. I see. So that date... It, that is when we're taking a snapshot of the country. Exactly. This is our snap, it's our not portrait of America between here day. And there. <laughs> it's a one day okay. point in time count. It's like our bank balance at a certain time. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Down to the cent. Right. So that's that's question one. How many people were here on April first? Okay. So the next question is were there additional people that you did not count in question one? So what does that mean? That's a, it's, Why didn't it's you count them funny. if they Why were? Why didn't you count them? Well, they could have been boarders. For example, you could have a college student renting a room in your house. And if you don't really normally think of them as being a member of the household, you see this question, it could, oh, right, I have John Doe staying in my basement. I need to put him down. So it's really just to make you think about who else was here? Correct because we well, want to funny. ensure a complete count. So it's not that they're going to say, who was it? I'm going to send them a form. Right. It's just a, it's just a mental thing mm -hmm. for the form. Correct. Interesting. Exactly. Number three, is, it, is the house, apartment, or mobile home owned with a mortgage, owned without a mortgage, rented, or occupied without rent? That fairly basic information. It's not particularly invasive, so it's... That's another right. one of those easy questions. Right. Uh, a condo, if you own it, is a you own Would it, be. and if you uh, rent it, it's a rental. It's a rental, exactly. Okay. So straightforward. That's pretty, pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. The next is a telephone number, and that is not because they want to harass you at dinner time every other Tuesday. They need the phone number in case they can't read one of your answers, or if they have a question about something, if you if what you wrote doesn't make sense. Things of that like nature. Like contradictions. Contradictions. Okay. If it's only to be used to verify information. So let's say you, you filled out um, number one, mm -hmm. and you said there were five people, and then you filled out number two, and you said there were ten. Would they call? They could call. They um, might call. They might call, unless you went ahead and filled in those extra people okay. later on. Gotcha. Because the form has spaces for up to, I think it's 12 people. So if you have more than 12, you would have to get another form. Okay. But they are available. <laughs> okay. So the next questions are to be, the information is to be provided for each person living in that residence. So now we iterate. This, it goes over and over the same okay. thing. So let's say that you and I are, are housemates, and let's say that you decide you're the householder, which is fine. Typi the census typically says if your name is on the rent or the mortgage, you would be the householder, so you would be person one. Okay. There are some cases where two people's name are on the rent or two people's name are on the mortgage. In which case, flip a coin. Okay, so it really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, matter who's the householder. You, know, you might have your name on the mortgage. Your spouse or the person you're with might be making 400000 a year mm -hmm. and paying everything else mm -hmm. and not care if you have the stinky little house or not. Yeah. <laughs> but it doesn't matter which one of you fill it out. Correct. Okay. Because as long as the information is on there, that's all we care about. Gotcha. We just want everybody to be counted. Right. So it's the name of the person, the sex, male or female, the age, and the date of birth. And then the next two questions get a little longer, only in terms of how much space they take up on the form. It's, are you of Hispanic, Latino, or Spanish origin? Okay. So in that case, it says, if you know I'm not, well, that's very straightforward. If you are, it asks you, basically which nationality or of which origin you would be. So Mexican, Mexican-American, Colombian, Dominican, 
Spanish from Spain, Puerto Rican, on and on. Now, does that, is that a confusing one? Because are some people wondering, am I or am I not? You know, my great grandmother came from Mexico. My my great grandfather uh, came on the Mayflower, mm -hmm. and on the other side, I've got Swedish and French. French, say whatever. Sure. It, Hispanic and origin and race are both self-identified questions. So the Census Bureau is not going to send somebody out to check okay. your DNA to see what percentage if you want to be you are from if Mexico. You, identify you can be from Mexico as being Mexican. Okay, you can say yes, that's my origin. Okay, so, that so for all out. of us Santana fans, uh, we can be Mexican <laughs> if you identify that way. Sure, it's okay. And the race is the same thing. Race, which is question nine, they ask, are you white? Are you black, African American, or Negro? And that's one chunk. Um, are you Asian? And if you are Asian, please identify which country you come from. Oh, there's more, but sadly, those have slipped my mind. Those are the big four. Okay. Um, and then there's an other. So if you don't identify as any of those, you can just fill in. So if you're Namibian or Ghanese? Correct. You just put you other. Can fit, you, and you can write that in. They have boxes to write things in. Okay. So additionally, with the race, you can hit more than one. So if your mother was black and your father was white, you can click white, black, done. Great. So that's very And you very just, I, I guess you just take your best shot here. Yep. Yes. Don't be, don't worry about it. Exactly. Okay. It's not, <laughs> it's good. not too stressful. Great. Not too stressful. So are we done yet? We are almost done. The last question is, does this person sometimes live or stay somewhere else? Do they sometimes stay in a prison? Do they sometimes stay at a college? Do they sometimes stay at a seasonal residence? That's on there so that the Census Bureau knows to look for a duplicate somewhere else. Okay. People in prisons and jails are counted separately. People in colleges should be counted where they live most of the time. So let's say I am a Siena student, but my parents live somewhere in Colony. I live with some friends in an apartment. I don't live with my parents. I should be counted at my apartment. Right. So that's, but if my Just parents- Just because you were there for, a for spring, spring break, break. Maybe you actually went to SUNY Buffalo. Sure. And you came, or yep. let's go to let's go to MIT or why not <laughs> Stanford or something. University of Hawaii. And I came wow. home for spring break. Exactly. And I, my parents should not count me here for okay. spring break. The census information will not go to student loan people. It won't go to any other federal agencies. So it won't affect your taxes. If your child is counted as a dependent on you and you need that for student loan and financial aid stuff, filling out in the census that they live in another place is perfectly legitimate and legal. And it's really separate anyway. Correct. You may be paying everything right. for them to live somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily it has nothing that you're to cheating. Do. It's just nope. uh, that's different. It's a different question. Entirely. They okay. are two separate pots right. okay. in two different universes. Great. <laughs> so nothing to worry about there. Now, are there any complications from people who have a home in Florida and a home in New York? New York. People who have two different homes, snowbirds as we sometimes call them, although I was informed Sunbirds. That sunbirds, <laughs> snowbirds. Sometimes people go to Colorado for the winter to go skiing. Mountain birds. I argue that they would still be snowbirds. They're just flying to the snow instead of from the snow. <laughs> I like that. But they should be counted in their usual place of residence. And it's possible that But you're, if it's six months, they own, a, they own a condo down there, they own a house up here. And it's six months in one and six months of the other. Do they flip a coin? They fill out both. Oh. What ha if you spend most of your time, well, let's say you spend seven months in New York and five months in Florida. That's perfect. We like that. You're it's in New nice. York. I'm, I'm a New Yorker. Right. Even if I may not count New York as my home, even if I don't pay taxes in New York, even if I wasn't born here, even if I don't vote here, wow. because I spend a majority of my time in New York. It's time. It's time. Okay. It is only time. That's it. Your usual place of residence is where you spend most of your time. So the community survey can deal with your money. Right. This, we're just talking it's, about where you're at. Exactly. 
Exactly. And it does not impact your state tax liabilities okay. whatsoever. So nothing to worry about there. Two very separate universes. In most of the country, people who have these snowbird situations will receive a form at each residence, so in New York and in Florida. If you're a snowbird and you are able to do so, you should fill back or fill out and mail back both forms. And what will happen then is it will trigger the Census Bureau to say, oh, look, we have a duplicate. We need to figure out. Now, how do they know there's a duplicate? The name. It's just the name. It's the name and the census. They're very quick, these Census wow. Bureau people. <laughs> so they can end up the, but, but the date of birth. But if your name is John Smith John in Texas Sm and John Smith, what are they? In New York. So let's say that John Smith fills it out in Texas and John Smith fills it out in New York. That's where question 10 comes in. Does person one spend some of his time okay. in another okay. location? Gotcha. So, so you eliminate all the ones that, that don't. they know. Correct. And then you look at the date of birth. And okay. then ah, maybe phone that's... call if necessary. Gotcha. And that eliminates 99.5% right. of the problems. Mm -hmm. okay. Unless you have twins that were born on the same day with the same name. And there'll probably be exactly that. There I may just be. were born on Christmas. <laughs> Bless their yes. hearts, and that could be a problem. <laughs> could be. Hopefully not. <laughs> Hopefully they'll both fill out the forms. <laughs> so if you get the form at your usual, usual residence where you spend most of your time during the year, for me, in my case, let's say, this is New York because I spend seven months here. I fill out the entire census form. I mail it back. This is where I'm going to be counted in the 2010 census. Some people worry that, again, Duplication, double counted, and overcount is just as bad. Well, not just as bad, but certainly something to worry about. If you are it in. It kind of nulls, uh, at least your. I guess it doesn't because it benefits both areas. Right. But we're in New York here. We don't really want Florida to, to right. take away. Right. Because that could make a difference. Our congressional seats and right. some of our funding. And they're we doing it already, that. so. Yeah, <laughs> we've got to keep what we can. <laughs> right. Keep, hold on to it. So if I'm in Florida on April at the time of the census, which is entirely possible because it, although it's nice today, it may be cold tomorrow here in New York, and I get this form, what I need to do is I need to put a zero in question one, which is how many people were living in this household on April 1st, because this is not my usual residence. Wow. Which is kind of confusing to a lot of people, because right. it does say how many people were living or staying in this residence on April 1st. Right. And while technically I was there on April 1st, the caveat and the qualifying statement for question one is, for your usual residence, so my usual residence is not Florida. I put a zero in, and I send it back. That's all I do. So let me recap that, because sure. um, let's say you spend 10 months in New York mm -hmm. and two months in Florida, or Colorado, or wherever, Somewhere. Hawaii. Let's. Okay, let's, let's do Hawaii. Sounds good. And in March and April, you're in Hawaii. Yep. So you would put a zero, mm -hmm. and you're oh. really filling it out for New York, New York, even though you're not there on April 1st. Right, because the Hawaii residence is not your usual And that's where residence. you live on April 1st. That's where that's you are. That's the important thing. Right. Not where you're standing. Correct. <laughs> okay. If you're traveling and I'm staying in a Motel 6 in Kansas City, I'm not going to fill out the form there. That's not <laughs> right. my usual residence. You don't even want to live in this Motel 6 in <laughs> No, if I were going to live in Aberdeen, Kansas, Kansas City, Kansas. I'd like to probably live in a, an apartment or a house. <laughs> so probably not the Motel 6. OK. So yeah, it's very easy. So I'm not sure. I think we've covered pretty much most of the issues. Any other problems you, you see that people have? Do they get confused on anything else? People get confused, and they get actually worried about what's going to happen if they don't have a permanent residence. OK. So our homeless population. That's a big, if you, big problem. If you don't have a home, how are you going to get counted? There was a, a large right. undercount of the homeless population here in this area in 2000. So the and certainly Albany would have had it much worse. Mm -hmm. Yep, the sense and Schenectady, Schenectady also, right. they really had a severe undercount. So the Census Bureau and CDRPC and a lot of other service providers are doing a real heavy push to make sure that the homeless population gets counted. This happens differently than the regular mailed form. Sense, or rather homeless people, if they're staying at a shelter, they get what we call a group quarters enumeration. So it's what happens in dorms or prisons or military bases. Right. People come, a census taker comes on a certain day 
and everybody gets an individual form and they fill it out and then they hand it to the census taker. So that happens rather than mailing it back. That way the census taker can see exactly how many people. If people don't want, if a homeless or somebody who's experiencing homelessness does not want to give their name, that's okay. They will take down whatever information they can get and we'll be happy with that. So that, that's, that's very important. Yeah, and I think uh, you know, that's an, an issue that many of us have read about in the mm -hmm. paper as Albany's uh, uh, total population shrinks. Yep. And they, they, I think a, one or two census ago, they, they fought. Uh, they would have dropped at that point below 100,000, and they didn't because they, they sued and they counted more people. Mm -hmm. But the, in the 2000 one, that was, they couldn't get there. Yeah. It was. Yeah. So I think most, most people who are watching the show wouldn't be in a situation right. where they're homeless. But it's still a very interesting topic. Mm -hmm. uh, and you just wonder, you know, are these, these people do exist. Yep. And they are they there. Are there. Uh, it's not a numbered, it may not be a numbered house. Sure. But it could be under the 787 bridge at the Corning Preserve. And they need to be counted too. Right. And even if people who are watching this don't, actually experience homelessness themselves. They may volunteer. They may go to a church that has a shelter or a food pantry of something of that nature. So there are still ways to make sure, we call it getting out the vote, but it's right. not really the vote. It's, it's just making sure that the message gets across. And well, it is getting out the vote in mm -hmm. Congress. Yep, that is very true. Very true. Yeah. So we're getting, we're trying to make sure that everybody is aware of that the we're census. represented and they're represented yep. because in, in another way, and I'm thinking, well, they're totally unrepresented because they're uncounted. Yeah, exactly. And if you are un uncounted, then that's it. You don't I mean, exist. You don't, yeah. In terms of. In terms of uh, a lot of things. Representative power. Yeah. Representative power and funding. I mean, this funding that we get from, that's based on census data, it goes to police stations, it goes to fire departments, it goes to ambulance services, it goes to highway infrastructure, it goes to hospitals, Medicaid, social services grants, a lot of federal grants. This is a lot right. of stuff that we're talking about here. It's a lot of services. And it's a lot of services that people who may be experiencing homelessness or potentially experiencing homelessness or facing some sort of economic problem, they could really strongly take advantage of these programs, and if they're not counted, then there would be less for less, them to take less advantage of. That program. of. Mm -hmm. And I thought of two other areas we probably should go back to sure. just a touch. This census only has 10 questions. Right. I don't think most people would feel that this is a, a danger to the, to, uh, for identity theft. Mm -hmm. You're not even asking for a social security number. Correct. Uh, you even have to do matching on names, Correct. so it's that anonymous. Uh, on the other hand, the other census the community one that mm -hmm. they might get at the same time, but yep. probably won't. Probably won't. <laughs> uh, does have more personal information, right. but it's just as important. Yep. Uh, you want to talk a little bit about the privacy issues? Absolutely. About that. Confidentiality of the census form and its information is at the forefront of many people's minds. People are very worried about, as you said, identity theft. They're worried that. Well, hack into I, the. Yeah. It'll, it'll affect everything. And it's not something to be worried about with the census. There, all this information is protected by a very strict law. All census employees take an oath. And if they disclose any information that could potentially identify you or your household, it's up to a $250,000 fine and jail time. So they take it very seriously, very seriously. This information, it can't go to anybody except for the Census Bureau if it could identify you. That means no law enforcement agencies, no immigration agencies, no social services agencies, your caseworker can't find out, parole officer can't find out, your landlord can't find out how many people you have living with you, which actually has become somewhat of an issue for a lot of people, especially with this economic downturn that we're experiencing. People moving in. People moving in. If I filled out on my lease that I have two adults and one child staying in my apartment, well, okay, actually, in truth, I have my sister and her three kids also staying with me and my cousin. And they said they were leaving last month, but... But they're still here. Right. They need to be counted on the form. If my landlord does not want them to be living there, 
I still need to count them on the form. That information about the number of people living in my house won't get back to my landlord. And it's still a dependency and we need representation. Correct. They're still living in that area. So that's a good point. Um, anything else? Lots of people have been who use the census for genealogy. Thank you. Tracing back their family history. And that fits with the library. How could I forget exactly. that? Exactly. It does fit very closely with the library. So I know I personally have used census previous, many years previous, census data to learn about what my forefathers were doing, where they lived, race, all that jazz. It takes 72 years for that, for this information that I fill out today to become public. 72, 72 years, 72 not, years. 70, not 70, 72. not 75, 72. <laughs> they shot the difference. 72. Okay. So 72 years before the information I fill out today can become public. So is it the 1930 census that we might have in our microfilm cabinet right now? Soon. Soon? Not Soon. even yet. Okay. Soon. Wow. Could be. Right. Okay. So we would have a lot of time. I mean, chances are probably not going to be alive for 72 years. Right. And that protects people protects for pretty people much for their entire life. Exactly. You know, it's hard for me to realize why did I forget that? Because for the last 30 years I've been a librarian and I've watched people look at these old microfilm machines mm -hmm. with rolls of census information for eight hours until their eyes sure. were falling out. And um, these days, that information is easier to get through with uh, uh, websites like Ancestry.com, mm -hmm. which we subscribe to for colony residents. But uh, it's still the same information. It is. It is. And it came from the same place. And that's the census. I know I used to go to the National Archives in DC and I would be one of those people sitting there for eight hours and oh, so it's not a it's not a real uh, leap to find out why you ended up working no, with that. No it's not is it? <laughs> Gosh I never thought of it that way. But yeah I've definitely been a user of data for a good long time. A good long time. So that's pretty good. Yeah, we like it. I love the census. And I think the community appreciates C D Regional Planning Commission, RPC. RPC, you got it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, how can they, if, what if they had another question about the census? How would they, how would they answer that? If, if we said something that confused them or they just sure. forgot? There is a local census office here in Albany, and they have a phone number that. We'll put that up too. We'll put that up too. It is 362-2178. And that will get you to the local census office where they can either answer your question directly or tell you where the closest, what we call a QAC, a questionnaire assistance Sounds center. Sounds like a quack. It does. <laughs> not supposed to say questionnaire that. Questionnaire assistance, assistance center. center. Okay. Yep. So a QAC is a location that is staffed by a census person where you can go if you have problems filling out your form, if you don't speak English very well, if you have literacy problems, if you can't see very well, you can go to a questionnaire. If you lose a form? It. If you lose a form, you can either go to a QAC and pick up a blank one, okay. or you can go to what we call a Be Counted site, which is essentially a box with a stack ah, of blank okay. census forms. Okay. The difference between the census form that you get at home and the blank forms at the Be Counted site is that the form at home has a barcode on it. And that barcode is linked directly to your address. Okay. The form, the blank form that you pick up at the Be Counted site has a space in there where you have to fill, fill out in your, your address. address. Okay, so it's a little easier to use the one at home. Yep. And it's a little easier for you. Exactly. A lot easier for the, for the census, census to read bureau. It. Exactly. Okay. Because they don't have to then key in all that extra information. Right. Okay. But there are available forms if you lost your form, if you didn't receive a form, if you are that college student living in somebody's basement and you think you may not have been counted, you can certainly go to a question or a be counted site, pick up a form and fill it out. It's better to fill out a form if you suspect that you weren't counted and then have right. two of you. Now, did you say where we might have a site locally? There, I did not say. But the local census office and the census website both have lists. Okay, okay. So the census website is 2010census.gov, 2010census.gov. Okay, and that's very right easy to for remember. the census. Exactly, right okay. to the census. And you probably put website. in your zip code or something? I don't know how they're going to do but, that. The list it, will be live shortly, okay. but it will certainly give you. And again, if you call that local census office number, they can tell you 
directly. Okay. Where call your library, call you, call mm -hmm. the Census Bureau. Sure. They'll find it. Yeah. Somebody somehow will track down the information right. you're looking for. Great. Chances are it'll come back to me, and <laughs> I will certainly have it. Beautiful. So. Yeah. Well, this has been fun. It has been. I thank you. I hope uh, we all have a successful census and get that done. I hope everybody fills it out, mails it back. I will. Good. <laughs> and there is one thing that I meant to say, okay, and great. that's that if you are worried about somebody coming to your house. You don't uh -huh. want somebody knocking on your door because your house is a mess or you have a mean dog or whatever your reason may be. The best way to avoid that is to fill out your form and mail it back. And, and we also left out, uh, do you have to fill it out? You do have to fill it out. It is required by law. As we said, this is an easy form. It's not only a constitutional mandate that they that count they, them, it's a constitutional well, actually, a legal mandate a legal that mandate. we fill it out. Correct. Yep. And that's why if you don't fill it out, they will send somebody repeatedly to your house to so make sure that they not, get you. So it's not so much a fine. It's just they're going to keep working gonna at it. They're going to bug you okay. for a really long time. <laughs> Great. I think you get up to six visits, Wow. which is certainly a lot. Right. That's more than UPS. Yes, it is. I think they only give you three. two. Oh, is it three? Yeah. That's good. <laughs> that counts the first one, though. Oh. <laughs> yeah, no, this is many more than that. Okay, great. So, yeah, that's the easiest way to avoid getting knocks on the door and all that, is okay. to get, some, get it in the mail. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. It's been and a joy. For me also. Excellent. And I want to thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the show, uh, that you fill out your census form, and that you have a great week. Take care. Welcome to Channel 17, the Town of Colony Government Channel.